So first I have to say that um, this time I really started with blank slides and that uh, many other people's, uh, people helped to shape uh, the slides and what is in the talk. Um, I'm also very happy uh, to have this opportunity and look up from the daily routine task and, and think ahead of it and uh, setting uh, a workshop session, looking at human infrastructure was excellent and it was a great challenge to think about that. Um, so um, these are the people who uh, contributed to the slide and also uh, helped in, in forming the content of it. But there are also, of course, others. I think you already know the names because we are one community and uh, many of them are known uh, to you. Um, and we aim <clears throat> since a while um, to, uh, to support research software sustainability across Europe and uh, beyond and gave the whole thing a title, which is uh, USSSI. Um, so when we look at the human infrastructure, we can do a first thing, which is asking a dictionary and dictionaries, um, because what, what we think of uh, first is that we all associate infrastructure with uh, tangible real world objects. So we think of uh, communication systems such as the telephone network or the internet, uh, transportation systems like uh, railroads, streets or water and uh, power lines. Uh, but when looking at a dictionary, it also says very clearly that, uh, the, that an infrastructures are the basic facilities, services, and installations for the functioning of a community. And we can ask the dictionary again for what facilities, services, and a community are. And uh, it is quite surprising uh, that the first things that are mentioned here, a facility is uh, and, and ease in, in moving or doing something, but it's also an ability, an aptitude, so which clearly indicates that we are talking about people. Um, when we look up <clears throat> what a service is, um, then it says uh, again uh, at the first place that this is work that is done for others, that these could be also duties and more importantly, assistance and help, which clearly is an indication that we are talking about people and talking about infrastructures. And finally, we can have a look at uh, the community. I think it's something that we all know. So this is a group of people having a common interest, um, a group viewed as forming as a distinct segment. And it can be also a group of yeah, organisms interacting with one another and with the environment in a specific region, where the specific specific region in this case is, is an area of interest and activity, which in our case is science. It can be a specific research domain, but it can also be the support of research with software services. So <clears throat> what are we talking about? Um, I think we are talking about uh, the, the human aspect which has a, a huge portion in infrastructures. And uh, an infrastructure is built out of people. So people form the infrastructure. So the human infrastructure are the people and they are the backbone of software sustainability. Um, who, who are these people? <clears throat> in the first place, of course, uh, these are scientists. So these are people, experts, which are engaged in observing, investigating, describing, explaining, predicting phenomena, real world phenomena. Um, then we also have um, the RSEs, the research software engineers or people that develop code, um, experts which are engaged in planning, constructing, designing, producing and operating and managing software. And finally, we have the funders, um, which are people <clears throat> who are engaged in promoting and supporting communities and who help uh, organizing and developing and financing undertakings, in this case, in science. So this is the community with three very important stakeholders that go hand in hand. Um, so what, what are the roles? So of course, the scientist is someone who, do, who, who does science and uh, requires research software nowadays for that. Um, this is standard. <clears throat> so uh, scientists take advantage of support measures. Um, we have uh, RSEs who provide the required research software to the scientists and provide support measures to work with the software. 
and to uh, allow that they gain the skills needed to work with the software. Um, and finally, of course, there are the funders who promote the science and sponsor the support measures. Um, so um, the question is what ensures software sustainability? Um, and basically we can say that software is made for people, uh, software is made by people, and software is promoted to serve people, which basically is that software and the sustainability simply is all about people with a very common objective, which is science in our case. So the building and sustaining, sustaining of software is a community effort that cannot be achieved with an array of equipment. It's definitely the human infrastructure, it's the people that help to sustain the software and to make use of it. <clears throat> So um, next thing would be, um, what would be the, the building blocks of a people-centric infrastructure for research software? Um, we can group them somehow. Um, it could be standards, knowledge and skills. Um, it could be uh, community building, networking, projects and operations. And I think we all know very well that these are parts of it. Um, that are required to finally gain sustainability when we talk about research software. For standards, for example, we need some sort of policies and best practices that are established in guidance who help others um, in adopting these best practices and policies. We are talking about uh, processes that everyone is aware of and understands and can make use of. Uh, we may talk about certification or also sort of career paths here. Um, for the standards, I think there is a very good example because we all know um, that uh, when, when we look at, at training, we all know the, the carpentries. And just by naming the carpentries, we have a certain understanding of what it is, what the quality level is, and what, what, the, what the services are behind. So the carpentries help to form internationally a standard in providing trainings, for example. So standards matter. Um, knowledge and skills, uh, we talked about it. It's about training a workshop, which is something that we are doing uh, all the time uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Uh, more or less, and uh, but it's also much more. It's advice on the job training, and it's also mentoring. So being together with the scientists and maybe accompanying the research itself together with them. Um, it also integrates hacky hours. A very important thing also is community building with fellowship programs, ambassador programs, and also organizing workshops and conferences uh, to get in touch with each other and, and uh, exchange and allow people to connect with each other um, to form, uh, let's say, uh, groups, uh, smaller groups, specific groups in the community for focusing on certain aspects. Um, so, of course, networking is also a very important uh, building block. Uh, where awareness raising, communication and exchange are an important thing and also the promotion of collaboration, which is important, important when we look at that, for example, for, for research activities, a certain um, know-how is required when it comes to um, building software or making use of software. And then we have more from industry, we know that, but it's also true for research. Um, in the project, project itself, um, we need some consulting, engineering, implementation, and management services when it comes to so software projects or uh, software-related activities within research projects. And in the end, of course, operations play a crucial role as well <clears throat> when we are uh, talking about um, 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 deploying software, maybe as a cloud service, for example, uh, making it available on HPC infrastructures or similar. So the provisioning, maintenance, and also the preservation of software when it comes to publications, for example, um, uh, is, is sort of operations. And all these things um, uh, are not things that we are doing uh, uh, with, with uh, an array of equipment. It's something where people are behind. Um, so um, the next question would be, why is people-centered infrastructure essential for software? Um, for the scientists, it improves research workflows with software tools that fit to the process of, of scientists. 
um, uh, sci a scientist gains time to undertake research. So using software and getting support uh, provide, provides a great opportunity to spend more time on research. Uh, it increases impact through improved quality and sharing of outputs. Uh, it builds essentially trust with repeatable, repro reproducible and reusable results. And of course, uh, scientists uh, benefit from uh, multidisciplinary research because scientists connect with research software engineers. So what uh, is uh, essential in terms of the research software engineers, they improve the usability and reliability of the software and research data likewise, because these two things are strongly connected to each other. Um, they uh, facilitate reproducibility and reuse, reuse, which adds the transparency and efficiency to science. And they support establishing cross-organization and cross-border processes that can be followed so that uh, many research domains can somehow follow the same processes. And we have a sort of standards that we can adopt. And uh, the funders are those who enable the use of the resources efficiently and in a coordinated way to address the shared needs of the community. And they promote uh, taking advantage of support measures and they also sponsor the provision of harmonized support measures uh, to be efficient. Um, they, of course, stimulate to learn and engage. They improve the impact and, of course, encourage, uh, uh, encourage the multidisciplinary research. So importantly, we have to understand that infrastructure shape over decades, and it's important uh, to uh, address infrastructures uh, in a way that they really have this impact over the decades in sciences. So um, the question is, what are the network effects? When we look at one platform, um, then a platform enables uh, the connections to be made and allows somehow sufficiently large critical mass of engaged members, which means that widespread connections are, are possible. And uh, uh, this increases the scale of the network and thus increases the value to everyone on the network and makes the entire network more useful for each of the members. So having one platform with much options to connect to, connect to each other is, is uh, very important as well as the aspect of ubiquity. Ubiquity makes uh, an essential part of, of the daily life throughout Europe and internationally and allows access and making use of it almost anywhere and everyone knows what to do. Um, so this is uh, also very important to speed up uh, uh, research activities and have more time in research. Compatibility is another aspect when we look, for example, at standards. It facilitates the development of complementary services, uh, not necessarily by compatibility, compatibility with each other, but with common standards, which then creates value in large measures because everyone else uses it as well. So we, for the funders, for example, we have, if we apply a platform with a uh, with uh, allow and, and, and enable a network with, with connections and uh, support ubiquity use and compatibility, we get some sort of economies, economies of scale where many uh, with the same network uh, are served with uh, the this, this, this service that have been shortly uh, drawn uh, at, at one of the previous slides and uh, at, at an affordable price in the end. Um, so we can think of what a cross-discipline research network can look at, uh, importantly, from my point of view, a harmonized approach, because it enables network effects uh, with the appropriate procedures in place, and it provides the foundation that allows for a universal and reliable services by efficient infrastructures. And um, the structured approach across national and regional funding borders uh, could address establishing standards, ensuring integration, and providing support. So when tinkering a bit with this idea, um, we can ask ourselves, what could a structured approach look like? And um, it's important to organize the community in a certain way and maybe address uh, this organizing in three pillars, where we, for example, look at standards with the policies and with the best practices, where we establish processes uh, that can be followed by many in, in Europe and internationally. 
um, that we also allow sort of certification and career paths with this standard standardization. Um, but also it is uh, in terms of adoption of the technologies and the way uh, of their use uh, when thinking in terms of an engineering way. And when looking at the integration, um, it includes passing on of skills with training, mentoring, for example, and um, also uh, community building activities uh, with fellowship programs and ambassador programs, as well as networking activities that enable um, and, and, and enable a faster exchange and promote collaborations. And uh, also uh, the third pillar is a sort of classical support uh, with services that help uh, in projects and in operations uh, like consulting implementation and the provisioning and maintenance of software. And um, these pillars uh, somehow needs to be organized and structured and uh, need a strong interfacing with the research domains uh, in one platform, um, uh, which could be done, for example, uh, with a software panel where we have a domain and software experts involved. And importantly, uh, we need advice uh, from the e-infrastructures. So finally, um, we cannot provide, I think, uh, answers right now, uh, but these should be some uh, impulses to think of. And uh, there are also further questions that need to be addressed to possibly help us finding how we could uh, organize uh, the community in a more structured approach. Um, we have to look off uh, what uh, scale of if, if scale of funding is 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 uh, an important thing. Also, the funding roadmap might be an important thing. So, how do we achieve a well thought out software funding? Um, what would what could be the major themes for that roadmap? Um, should it be a European wide coordination, for example? And what are the roles of the different, let's say, organizations involved in that games? Uh, universities are different than research centers in some sorts, and also research infrastructures are a bit different uh, and have uh, different object objectives in mind. And uh, we also have to consider different research programs. And um, of course, we also have to think about if it's only the people behind and in front of the software that are the key to ensure software sustainability, or if there's anything else to be considered. Thanks.